Hello, welcome to a another wonderful video by me, Brandon. Um, today I'm going to be rebuilding this little fuel pump. These are common on engines up to 15 horsepower. After 15 horsepower, you know, 20 and above, they, they start changing. Um, another notable thing is these are also backwards compatible. Um, some of the older pumps that you'd find on early 5.5, 6 horsepower engines, they're uh, shaped a little bit differently. You can easily swap one of these things out for that, so that's a uh, good thing to know. So, let's get started. Alright, well, let's get our kit here and we'll empty out all our parts and get to taking stuff apart. This gasket is the base gasket for your cap here. We'll set that off to the side. This is the fuel pump base gasket, which goes there and gets installed in the motor. I'll use this later. And we have our primary parts here and our little springs and stuff inside the back. So we'll set our screws off to the side here. We'll take off our little filter cap. At this point, you'd want to clean Remove that screen, clean it out with some solvent or some carb cleaner or something. Get it line nice and pretty. You can uh, kind of see some little flakes inside of my screen already. So that's a uh, good idea to do that. Now we'll take off our screws. Now loosen them. Now you want to remember how this came off. The back here we have two little tabs. And we have this thing going down. So we want to make sure that we install it that same way. Make sense? I'm gonna slide my old parts off to the side and not confused with the new stuff. There's our top base. We'll have to scrape that gasket off. This little guy. and stuck. We have a spring under there, so keep an eye on that. So with the fuel pump nice and taken apart, you can then get in there with a Q-tip or solvent or something and just kind of clean up the insides a little bit. I already did this one. The uh, phone rang and while I was talking I was just kind of scrubbing it down, but you know, it was pretty dirty, but Good idea to clean everything. Same with the uh, the base there. So we have our two screws that we took out. You can put those in from the back upside down. That'll give you a nice little assembly base. Now where you assemble this, you want to kind of make it look like it was on the motor. So those two little tabs are up on mine, so they're going to be up when I assemble this. So this is a called a pump base. The older pumps, this one, didn't come with a gasket there. Newer pumps do. And it is included in our kit. So you want to put the pump base gasket down, regardless of if you had one on there or not. Now, you need to install the pump diaphragm gasket, which is this. This has two little tabs on it now. The old one didn't, so, you know, notable. So your diaphragm gasket goes down like so. Now we need the diaphragm spring which is the big one, and the diaphragm base, which is the little white piece of plastic thing. So that goes kind of in the center. Well, not kind of, in the center. At least the center is you can get it. Followed by your spring. Now we need to install our valve housing, which is this guy. This has a little indent right there, a little recess. That goes on the spring. Also, you have these two little tabs, which match up with our uh, pump base here. So those spring needs to go in there. These two guys need to be at the top. That's why we have it kind of sitting the way we do. And just want to make sure it's nice and centered in there. Which, mine just kind of clipped in. Now things get a little tricky. This is our next gas we're going to use. Don't get it confused with this one or with this one. 
See those little cutouts? They match up with these. Those are called the air dome springs. Those need to align. So our gasket is gonna sit right in there. So let's kind of push this down and hope it stays put, which I'm not betting it will, but we can hope. Nope. Oh well, no biggie. So the next point is the air dome spring, which is a little one here. Depending on where this was is going to depend on where that spring is going to go. So let's say you had it sticking out like so, your spring would go on this side. Make sense? If you had it flipped around down here, it would still go on this side. Follow me? If it was on this, going this way, your air spring would now be on this side, or in my case, it was coming down this way. means it's going to be on that side as well. So keep all that in mind. So mine is going to be down like so. We're going to need our air dome spring and our air dome support which is tiny. So you put the top back into the spring just like the old one that came out which is sitting right there and in our case we're going to be trying to put it on this side. Whether it stays or not, it's a whole different ball game, but let's hope it does. It may take a few tries, but not the end of the world. Alright, see these two holes? The gasket there? Those are called inlet and outlet valves. So we have our next uh, gasket. This gasket is called the air dome support. It has two holes, they need to line with those two holes. When you do all this, you have to make sure nothing in here moves, your bottom spring or your top spring or any of your gaskets. So things can get a little tricky here. Feels like my spring's kind of coming out of whack, which is kind of expected considering this little diaphragm is, you know, paper thin. But kind of feels like it's all in there and okay. And you can peek underneath and have a look. In my case, I don't know if you can see it, but it's still in there, it's still in one piece. So we're okay there. Now, the hard part, I need to get these guy, this guy on there. So I have my finger over the spring, I'll rotate that down and around. Now I can pull this screw out just a little bit. Give me a little more room to rotate this up and over. Careful not to uh, destroy your gasket here either. And in theory, that should all be nice. It's still in one piece. Make sense? Good. Now if your hand gets tired from holding those together, you can take one of your supporting screws out and then use it to screw it in and hold it in. I use the longer one to push it out for me. The reason I'm doing this right now is because A, my hand's getting tired and the camera's about to die. So I'm going to go charge the, uh, the camera while this sits here. So now what I need to do is get this whole gasket off of our top plate here. So, got a uh, razor blade over here in the corner for that. Should snap right off. Now we'll clean this up and along the top the best I can. So I thought the top here was grease and dirt. It actually looks like what happened was the gasket has been there for so long and kind of rubbing that it kind of wore the chrome finish off the top because this thing is clean. It's it's not getting my hand dirty at all. So, oh well. So this next step is going to be a little hard to show you without my hand blocking the way. So, while we're here, you can also see inside the spring here. See a little indent? Nice and springy still. Pretty good sign our inner spring hasn't moved. It's moved, it ain't gonna work. The bottom one's not that big of a concern. You know, the big spring, this guy, because it's pretty easy to line up, has a little cavity you sit in. This one is just held in that little gasket right there. So it's kind of a problem. But luckily you can kind of see it, kind of play with it, and you can tell it's in there working okay. So what you're supposed to do with this top plate, see it's got a U? That is supposed to be on the outside. Up like so even though we removed it this way it's supposed to be on the out so I don't know if somebody else rebuilt this one point in time 
or if they recommend flipping it over now that it's old and used, who knows what the case is. So either way, I'm going to install that with you up. I don't see it making a bit of a difference at all, because even if you install it like that, or like that, you, you kind of come out with the same outcome. Also, it kind of looks a little smiley face, kind of funny. Anyway, so we have our uh, gasket here. I'm going to pull the screw out. It's holding it all together. I'll be holding it together with my hands. I'm going to put the gasket back on. I'm going to put this guy back on the top. Now, when you put this top back on, notice that little notch. The little outlet plate here also has that little notch. Those two need to line up. If they don't, you put your little intake on the wrong side. You know, fuel comes in through here. So, let's say it's not over on this side. You know, that's where it's supposed to go. Let's say it's over here. It probably ain't going to be sucking the gas in there. So, keep that in mind. Tab. Tab. A little hard to do, I think, because now the springs are going to be forcing this thing apart. But somehow i got to get a gasket and a plate in there. That should, uh, should work out okay, I think. There's the gasket. Nothing's moved so far. There's our little notch. And there's our U. So we'll line those up. Just like so. And we'll put our screws back in. And there's basically our rebuilt pump. Now we'll go clean this guy out. Okay, filter screen is pretty cleaned out. Put our little base gasket back on. Well, let's probably put it here actually. And I don't remember where this goes, but I'll just put it on for now. I'll uh, move it when it comes time to reinstall this thing. Like so. And we got our mounting screws. Before I put these on, I'll wire wheel them up, make them look all pretty like again. And our base gasket. And there is our freshly rebuilt fuel pump. Got the old leftover parts here. Get those out of the camera. Perfect. And I don't really see any leftover parts at all. Bag's empty. And uh, so, job well done. So, there, I have two different kits here. One is the Napa version, and this is a Sierra part number, so I'm just guessing uh, Napa throws it in their bag with the Sierra part number on it. No big deal. And then we have our Evernerd kit behind it. So if you notice on here, it says, you know, replaces Johnson Evernerd 393088, which is the part number for our bag here. So let me open these up and I'll show you the differences in them. Well, Apparently I'm a little out of a camera range here, but you can see in our Evernerd kit we got a whole bunch of parts. Uh, main difference being this black plastic piece. We have two springs and two little parts here. Now in our Sierra Napa kit, it varies, varies pretty greatly. We got a couple of gaskets, spring, and that little guy. The Evernerd kit is a little more expensive than the Sierra Napa kit, um, but key difference, you have less parts, mainly this guy. Now if you have a fuel pump, this guy, which is old and this thing's kind of brittle and starting to break off, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying the cheaper kit, buy the Evernerd kit because you'll have a nice, you know, good new one of these that isn't brittle and breaking. If yours isn't brittle and breaking and you wanted to save a few dollars, by all means buy the Sierra Napa kit there. Also, the Evernerd kit does come with a new little base gasket that was stuck in the bag. I'm sure, I know it. Now we got one pump done. Pretty easy, I think. Now we got the Sierra parts. Let's show you what the insides look like. So we still have a spring. Still have our little valve spring. I already forgot what it's called. Now it feels more rubber. So your main components are basically identical. The gaskets do seem a little different, a different type of material. This one doesn't, that feels exactly the same. It does that one, but this guy's the only real 
feelable difference, really, that and this one. This this feels like O-ring rubber. But the components are basically the same. The only main difference being it doesn't come with a new little uh, outlet valve. I think that's what it's called. So, while well, I'm here, might as well redo this one. You? Hmm. So maybe the other one was rebuilt incorrectly or assembled wrong from the factory. Doesn't really make a difference now. Let me go clean up our uh, our main components here, and I'll replace all the inners. So, getting ready to do this one, and the first step on the uh, last pump was the base gasket. We don't have one in our kit here. Um, wasn't installed originally, probably doesn't need to be installed here, but still notable. Well, as you can see, I just rebuilt these two fuel pumps. First one took a little while because I was explaining it as I went. Next one took less than five minutes. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, again, these are used up to engines up to 15 horsepower, and they are backwards compatible with a lot of the older design pumps. Um, I think either kit's going to work fine. I don't necessarily think you need the Johnson or Evinrude kit. And Sierra Napa 1 seems like it did just the exact same job. Like I said, the only difference between the Evinrude is it comes with a new little output here, and it comes with a new uh, base gasket wasn't there originally so it doesn't absolutely need to be there obviously but they probably added it in for some kind of reason so you decide which one you want this one you can get for you know 15 bucks this one's about 25 so is the 10 bucks worth it for that little output and new gasket for many people it probably isn't so just something to keep in mind now the big difference between these two kits one comes in a big huge bag which is you know, kind of neat if you want to throw your old parts in and save it. But the main important part that it does come with, if the other one does not, is a massive instruction booklet. Um, I've done this many times before. I ne didn't necessarily need to go through the instructions as I did this. I went through it to give it the uh, every component the proper name. But this video is going to be handy if you're going to rebuild one. At least you get to see how it's done before you uh, dive in and do yours. So, I don't know. Whatever one you want to go with, cool. But... Next time I do a fuel pump, I plan to do one of the 20 to 50 horsepowers, and then I'll do probably every pump up until then. I don't know, it's, I suppose it's a handy thing to see. Well, if you got any questions, let me know. Um, I'll put links to the bottom in the description for these two kits. So those links will help support the channel, so please follow those. Even if you're not going to buy anything, if you plan on buying a vacuum cleaner or something, click on that Amazon link and then go buy the vacuum cleaner. Every little bit helps. Well, have a good one, everybody.